This week's episode is sponsored by the Breakthrough to Excellence Network. This network will help you stop scaling your business in chaos and get you back to building your legacy by restoring your confidence, your systems, and your strategy that will honor your God-given talents. You can find more information at www.jasminehaley.com. Welcome to the Breakthrough to Excellence podcast. I'm Jasmine Haley, healthcare provider turned educator, entrepreneur, and startup strategist. Not too long ago, I was burnt out, overwhelmed, depressed, and full of fear from a toxic work environment. I created my business out of necessity to create a legacy I can be proud of today. It helps me transform the lives of women every single day to pursue their dreams and entrepreneurial goals. I created this podcast to share the empowering stories of entrepreneurial women, help you break through self-doubt to your greatness, and share business strategies to help you create a thriving and profitable business. If you are an emerging entrepreneur or business owner that wants to create the mindset needed to escape burnout, reclaim your personal power, and pursue your entrepreneurial dreams, this podcast is for you. Stay tuned and listen in. Hey, hey, hey. I'm thankful that you have decided to join me again for another amazing podcast training. I am talking this week about onboarding new hire tips. Now, listen, I have had some really, really horrible situations that have happened. Not too bad, right? I mean, I'm being dramatic here, but it was pretty overwhelming, right? And just not a good look. And it wasn't entirely my fault. And it wasn't entirely the person that I decided to hire his fault. But as CEOs, right, we have to take the brunt of it, right? We have to take the brunt of that responsibility. And that's what I didn't really understand. I just knew I needed help. I didn't know how to demonstrate how I needed the help. I just knew that I was currently overwhelmed in my business. So I'm going to share some three critical steps that are important to understand as you're looking to onboard your new hire so that you have clarity on how you can utilize them, but most importantly, how they can support the business growth. And then it will also put you in a place where they are less overwhelmed. They are also in a place where they can fully support your business or opt out and say, you know what, this isn't a grit fit for me. (laughs) So I have had people who have come in and there was a lack of communication on my part. I didn't have SOPs created at that time. So it was very hard to relay what my expectations were from just my head because I was so used to kind of just doing things all over the place. And a lot of people, regardless of where they are in their business, you would be amazed the state of some businesses, even the very profitable ones who don't have some of the fundamental pieces of organization placed in there. And so they've gotten by, right? They've made money, but at some point it will lead to chaos. And so the onboarding tips that I'm sharing is one for you to maintain that clarity two to always be moving in the direction that is in alignment with who you are and how you want your business to show up and how you want it to present itself in your life. But most importantly, that you're building a rock star team that can grow along with you and that is fully aware of the mission that you have and they are understanding of how they can support that mission. We're in a place right now where we don't want to have to deal with, you know, people leaving all the time from our business. It takes a lot of energy and time to have to onboard our team. And so it's important to be onboarding them to win. You want them, you want to be planning to help these individuals win in your business, because if they're winning, you're winning. So I'm going to share these three onboarding tips that I shared in my, one of my live trainings. And I hope that it provides you some source of empowerment, but encouragement of seeing, well, how can I further step into this leadership role, the CEO role, and make my processes support 
the vision that I want to have, but also help support my team members in achieving that same vision. All right, y'all. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts. Feel free to DM me on Instagram if you had other tips that you want to add, any other value that you may have. And feel free to let me know what hasn't worked for you, right? You, Of course, you can share what has, but share what hasn't. I love learning from all of you. And if you're in a place right now where you know that you're essentially throwing spaghetti on the wall, right? You are scaling and growing your business in complete chaos, and you just want to get out of the rut that you're currently in and actually build a strategic blueprint that is customized to you and your needs, feel free and reach out to me. The work that I do in my Legacy Scaler program, trademark, okay? Legacy Scaler, little TM on the on the back end of that. I am just so very proud of this program, primarily because it takes a full look, a full holistic look at businesses, a full business analysis, and getting you the CEO roadmap trademark term as well, that will help you achieve the goals that you know are fully possible. There's a reason why those goals keep coming up, right? There's a reason why you've gotten into business. You are here, you have a greater purpose, you're ready to make your impact, and you want to do so with a business that's aligned with you, that honors your boundaries, that honors your God-given purpose. So if that is of interest to you, feel free, DM me on Instagram, on Facebook. You can send my team a message at BTP events at beyond the profi.com. There's no reason why you should be in on this journey alone. And that's the reason why I continually show up with the trainings that I have. But most importantly, I get to highlight every other week, an amazing entrepreneur that has figured out how they can best serve their clients and stay in alignment with what makes them happy and fulfilled. All right, y'all, I will see you all next week. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. Hey, hey, hey. All right. I am live. I'm live everywhere. Okay. Instagram, Facebook, my page, my group, LinkedIn, YouTube, you name it. So today I'm going to share with you three tips that have been instrumental in my own growth in my business, but as well as my clients. And I hope that this provides you some thoughts empowers you to kind of consider how can I frame my business so that I'm able to reach the goals that I desire. All right, so let's go through the first couple of things I definitely want to highlight and just share with you all. As you know, this is my weekly live that I come live and I share what's all happening. So last week, the Breakthrough to Excellence podcast debuted. Yay! And we just hit a milestone. Um, of 3,000 downloads, which I'm super excited. So we're now moving towards our next milestone. I also hit a milestone on Instagram with 2,000 followers, which is awesome. So I'm just really, really excited for the growth, slow and steady, right? As I'm honoring and staying in alignment with where I'm at. Also today, I do want to share this. My book came in hardcover. It's here. So it's not yet available yet. And I will be putting this on my website for purchase. And if you do purchase a hardcover, not the paperback, a hardcover, I will sign it. And I also will give you some extra goodies. So it's not quite up yet. We have to get the store ready. I have to allow my team to help me to do that because I can't do all the things, right? We can't all do all the things, but I'm super excited about that. Uh, And I can't wait. It feels so surreal to actually have it in hardcover. Woo! All right. So let's get on to these onboarding hiring tips. This is what you're here for and to learn. And, And let me know if some of the tips that I'm sharing you've kind of incorporated. Go ahead and type a one in the chat. Or if you're watching, go ahead and type that. And let me know if you have hired someone and have had a nightmare situation occur, right? Type a two in the chat if you've hired someone and they failed to actually work 
up to the expectations that you needed. Type a three in the chat if you have ever dealt with feeling like you had to micromanage your employee because you would assign them things and things weren't being followed through with. Type a four in the chat if you have dealt with having a large cycle of people come through your business and you can't seem to find the right fit. And more than likely, regardless of who is re-listening to this or actually watching this, we've all sort of dealt with some of the challenges that arise with having to hire. So when we're looking at scaling or growing our businesses and we want to build a legacy, a business legacy, a legacy that is built on our core values and what's meaningful for us, a legacy within our business that allows us to have a life outside of business, one of the key components of that is making sure that we hire individuals and seamlessly bring them on to our team. And so I'm going to share some of the tips that I've seen within my own business, but also within my clients. Many of my clients who are growing and scaling their business have a small team. They're looking to add other individuals. And the primary focus is to remove the CEO as a bottleneck of the business. So I have my three tips, y'all. I hope you've taken the time during this brief introduction here to grab a pen and a paper, and let's start with the first one. The first one, the very first tip that I would give if I was speaking to myself years ago or even speaking to a client now is to know your numbers. I think it's really important to know that because if you don't know your organizational metrics, if you have no clue what they are, you don't know, you essentially aren't going to understand the direction that your business is heading. You're not going to strategically know where you need to focus. You're not going to know where you need help the most. You don't really know what your tasks are if you don't really know your organizational trick. And so knowing your numbers and knowing the direction that you want to take your business and what's working and what's not working will all be established in that. And so when you are clear about what direction your business is going, what you want, what's actually healthy and running well in your business, what will occur is clarity on what task or things that you need assistance with in your business. You'll have clarity with that. And so you will also understand which areas you need to focus on for income generating tasks, where your time needs to be spent and what you need to remove off of your plate. So knowing your numbers, knowing your organizational metrics, getting clarity on the direction that you wanna go, which is what I call the CEO roadmap trademark, having that idea and clarity on that will help you to really understand like what help do I need next in my business. So when I had a Facebook group and I had a group coaching program and I was feeling like, man, at this point in my life, I am completely bogged down. It's a lot to handle the several different meetings that have to occur, the engagement that's necessary. And so I knew at that point in time in my business, it was time for me to hire a community manager, to hire an accountability coach. Why? It was important for me as a CEO to stay in my CEO lane and allow someone else to support me in this role as a community manager, because it was necessary for the clients to feel supported, to get them to have a transformation as necessary based on their own goals. And I know that I can't be every single place. So looking at the metrics, looking at where I wanted to grow, that hire was essential for me. So that's the same thing that you're going to do within your own business. All right. Number two, 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 two. Don't throw your new hire to the wolves. Okay. Which is why it is essential that when you hire someone, you're not hiring someone when you are in an overwhelmed state. It is best to do that prior to the overwhelm, y'all. Because what happens is, is that if we get our perspective or, you know, new hire into our business and we're overwhelmed, what are we going to do? Right? We're going to be like trying to get everything off of our plate so that we can just breathe. So don't throw your new hires to the wolves. In fact, 
I feel, strongly feel, and what I have seen work for me is to develop an onboarding process for your new hires when they come in. And that process will essentially take them through what your expectations are. It will also help acclimate them to the culture of your business. Just having someone come in and throwing a couple of tasks to them as soon as they get in will lead to further frustration for you and more time that you don't have trying to backtrack and clean things up because you did not onboard them through the process in a very clean, efficient way and a strategic way as well. So one of the key things that I love within my own process is making sure they understand my mission, my vision, my core values of my business. I want to establish a rapport with them. I want them to feel like they have a firm grip and understanding the direction of where I want to take my business because we're all going in that direction together. So when the team is in alignment, when the culture is in alignment, with everyone is understanding what the end game goal is, it allows for more fluidity within your business and it allows for more support so that you can serve in that CEO role. And I love providing multiple forms of feedback and opportunities for feedback as someone is through that onboarding process. So I don't throw everything on them. In fact, I only give them a few select tasks so that they don't feel overwhelmed in the process of being in that learning mode of learning what the business is, where it's headed, and, and so forth. All right, here's number three. Three. All right, here's the third one. Are y'all ready for the third one? The third tip that I want to give for those who are looking for onboarding their new hires. The third tip is you have to hire for expertise and strengths. In fact, I would rather pay more for the level of expertise and the strengths that they have because I know how valuable of an asset it is into my business. So let me explain. Essentially, I want to encourage you to not rush the process, which again goes back to the point of number two, which is not throwing a new hire to the wolves, but actually not trying to hire someone when you're in an overwhelmed state. It doesn't work. And when you are rushing through the process, you're going to miss some of the gaps that shows you that this person may not be a great fit for the direction that you want to go in your business. And so essentially what I love to do is I really take a look at everything. I look at their strengths. I look at their Enneagram, right? I'm looking at their personality, their disc assessment. I'm looking at my own. So I'm very, very familiar on who I am as a person and what I need within my own business. And I'm also taking a really close look at what is their level of expertise. And in fact, I, I would say that many of you would probably agree testing these uh, individuals out beforehand when you have people who have their own expertise and strengths, right? And they come in with these with this expertise and strengths. What are they able to do? They're able to be an asset to your organization and they also will be more well-equipped to be a leader within your business. We need leaders within our businesses so that they are able to work independently in conjunction with the team culture and, and things that are important for you, but especially working as a leader so that you don't have to feel like you have to micromanage or you don't have to feel like your, your team is constantly asking you questions over and over and over again because they're afraid to move forward without your say-so. So hiring people who bring in their own expertise and who are ready to step into that leadership role in that position will essentially assist you in being the CEO of your business and transition you away from being the bottleneck. And when we're growing and scaling our businesses, we need to be in a place where we're able to do that. We're able to breathe. Because if you can't, what's going to happen is you're going to be still serving as the administrative assistant in your business instead of the CEO. And therefore, it's going to be difficult for you to be able to have a life outside of your business. And we have not created our businesses to become chained to our own businesses, right? Or feeling like we're still living that nine to five life and not actually conquering our goals and working efficiently within our own business. 
All right, so that was it. Those are my three. I'm gonna recap them really quickly here, okay? The first one is know your numbers, know your organizational metrics. That is essential so that you know where the need is in your business. You don't wanna hire just to hire. Where are these people going to go? Number two, don't throw your new hires to the wolves. It's important for you to have a very strong onboarding process, get clear on what your vision and culture is in your business and acclimate them into that. Don't rush. I love to use a two week period for my onboarding process, but I'm also working with a smaller team and that may be different for your business. Again, utilize something that works for you. And the next one is hire for expertise and strengths. I love leaders. I love to look at what asset can they be to my business? How can they help me grow? Instead of me going through the process of training and training and training and training and training. And and, and I will have to give this caveat here. There are some that are ready for that, right? I have definitely have trained people who may not have all my areas of expertise, but are they still equipped to come in an efficient way so that that training process doesn't have to be prolonged because the longer you're away from what needs you have to take care of as a CEO, that eventually leads you back down that road of being the bottleneck of your business and not allowing you to be in a place where you can grow and scale it. So those are my three tips and I hope got the wheels turning for you and will help you consider how you're going to next onboard your new staff member or contractor or whoever it is that you use. So whether they're a contractor or someone that I'm permanently putting on my team, I think it's essential for you to take in consideration what your onboarding process is so that you can avoid feeling like you're throwing spaghetti on the wall and get to a place where you're building your business with ease and not in chaos. Okay, y'all, I will see you all next week at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Keep in mind that we continue this conversation in our clubhouse room. So we'll be talking more about this topic with a panel of experts that are all sharing what has worked for them. So if you know that you're in that place right now to hire, you definitely should join the clubhouse, scale your business incubator, and make sure you follow me at It's Jasmine Haley. And that way you'll be notified when we start the room so that you can continue to learn from all the amazing resources my organization and business provides every single week. All right. I hope to see you all next week and I hope you have a great day. Bye. Thanks for tuning into the show. Dive in deeper by visiting the show notes for this episode or listening to more episodes on jasminehaley.com. If you found value in the show, share with a friend or leave us a review. I'll see you next time.